What's the best approach for consciously manifesting in the world? Should you just sit and stay in a state of presence or get up and take action or both? Today, we're going to show you how to work them all together so you can be and do and be and do and do be do be do. Check this out. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, helping you achieve more success in your life, whether it's in your business, your home life, your hobbies, with less time and effort and more joy and happiness. If that sounds good to you, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification and follow along. Now, on my last video, I talked about the importance of being a doer to take action and get results. And it's not just taking action for the sake of getting results, but using the action as a catalyst for growth to expand yourself and enable yourself to take on more and more and more. Now, here's the thing. There are some of us that are purists when it comes to spirituality and self-development. And we hear some of these great teachers like Lester Levinson say, well, you should get everything by releasing only or Ramana Maharshi, who says, be not the doer. And we look at this like in a black and white perspective, and we use that perspective to judge the actions, make them wrong. Well, you shouldn't take any action. You should just sit on your butt and only release. Now, if we take this approach, we're missing out on a huge opportunity for growth. And we're also missing the point because while Ramana Maharshi said, be not the doer, he said that it's the identification with the actions, with the identification of doership, that is the bondage, not the actions themselves. And even Lester, he said, yeah, release on it. But barring that, if you need to take action, big deal. Go ahead, do the next best thing, take the action, get results, but release first, all right? Now, if we look at some of these masters, we could see how they easily handle lots of action. Like Yogananda, he traveled across from India to the United States, brought over the practice of meditation, and built up a huge organization the Self-Realization Fellowship. And in fact, I re remember visiting his lake shrine in Malibu, and there's a whole story with uh, some artifacts there about how he would row out in a rowboat into the middle of the little lake shrine in the lake there and direct everything. He'd tell people, okay, build that structure there, plant those trees exactly right there, plant those bushes exactly right there. He directed it all. He had his hands in everything. And there's another master that I got to witness and hang out with for a while by the name of Amma. She's known as the Hugging Saint. Now, she came from the humblest of beginnings and developed a huge worldwide organization, ashrams all over the world. She has started over 200 charitable organizations. She's built at least one hospital and a university. So she's created all of this stuff. And she travels around the world doing something that she calls darshan, where she greets thousands and thousands of people. And one evening, in, you know, she does this evening after evening, thousands of people each night, and gives them all an embrace, just kind of an embrace of presence. Now, why she's doing this? She has a line of people that are queued up to ask her questions, seek advice from her. She has another line of people that are there to get a mantra from her. She has like no local media people coming up and doing interviews with her. And her swamis are constantly coming up, putting a phone in her ear, putting a laptop in front of her, where she's making business decisions you know, in all of our organization, she's directing everything. And while she's doing that, she's never breaking her presence. She's just doing it all with ease and grace. And 
Everybody that comes up for a hug, from the first person to the very last person, she gives them her full undivided attention. So it's an amazing thing to witness. Now, when I first traveled to Los Angeles to work with one of Lester's students, who I worked with for a number of years to uh, help get out the method, when I showed up, he was doing everything by himself. And he was doing the work of easily five people, from teaching the classes, to doing telephone releasing support, to the marketing, to the marketing research, to the accounting and logistics, everything. And me showing up, I used to be easily the laziest person on the planet, the biggest slacker. And I watched him and my mind was like ready to explode. Like, whoa, I don't want any of that. And I watched people criticize him. They'd say, well, if you're supposed to do everything by releasing only, you look like you're really working hard. What's up with that? And what he said was, look, I only do what I want to do. And if I decide not to do this, I can just drop it all and leave it all behind. Now, I watched him closely over the years, and it was true. He did exactly what he wanted to do. What he wanted to do was help get the method out. So he just put his attention into that. But no matter how much work that he had on his plate that I saw, if somebody called up and they really needed support, he would spend hours with them on the phone, working with them. And if he wanted to just sit and watch golf for five hours in the middle of the afternoon, he would do that. He'd have no problem. And if he wanted to take vacation, he would do it. Just decide and he would go. So I saw it was true. He did only what he wanted to do. And now I find myself strangely in the same position. Starting this new organization, I find myself having a hand in everything. You know, wearing lots of hats from doing videos to doing classes to doing marketing to doing research, managing all the logistics on the back end. And again, easily the work of five people. And what I found here is that because of the years of releasing and the willingness to take action, it's easy. I do all this stuff, I'm not stressed out. In the past, before I learned how to release, everything was a time crunch. I was always on deadlines and really stressed out, staying up all night and wearing myself out to get things done. Now I'm doing so much more than I ever did before with no stress. And strangely enough, I have lots of time. If I want to spend the whole day walking around Amsterdam, taking pictures or just enjoying the city, I do it. And I still get everything done, mostly. But here's the thing, by taking action, it's enabled me to release the blocks to taking action and also the blocks to getting the results. So let me give you an example because this is such a great opportunity for growth to take this approach. Say I wanna do a video, like a YouTube video. Now, before I do the video, I might not feel like doing it. I might feel like, oh, I'm not ready for it. I don't know what to talk about, or oh, I just don't feel like it. Let's do it another day. But I just sit down and I release. I let go of any feelings, any resistance, any wanting to procrastinate, just let it go. So it's okay if I do it, it's okay if I don't do it. Either way, I'm all right. And then I decide to do it. So as I'm doing it, now during the process, I'm releasing. So even as I'm doing it, if I make a mistake, I have to stop and start over. I don't beat myself up, I let that go. I let go of any stress as I'm going through the process. And I do it, I finish the video, and then afterwards, I can release on the results. So I look at it, it's either a good video or no, not so good, I'm not so happy with it. But I let go of wanting to change anything. And if I have to do it again, I'm okay with that. Nice and easy. Or if it's okay, okay, I put it up there. And when I do the next video, I'm nice and released, so when I do the next video, I'm not 
lingering in my mind about, oh, last one was so difficult. Oh, it's going to be difficult again. No, I'm on a clean slate. I'm fresh. I'm in the moment. Let's do a new one, right? So as you release, it doesn't mean that you don't take action. You release, take action, release as you take action, continue taking action, finish the action, release after it. So it's a process of being and doing, working hand in hand. So you be and you do and you be and you do, just like the old singers, dooby dooby do. So if you keep that little mantra in mind, it'll help you move forward and get greater growth and get results. So let's do some releasing on this now. All right. Think about a goal that you have. Think about a goal that you would like to achieve. And it might be a goal that you could see that there are some definite actions that you could take. Maybe it's a business goal. Maybe it's expanding your business, marketing. And you can see, okay, I can take this step. I can do some research and figure out, okay, who am I going to market to or whatever, right? So there are some things that you could do that you could see will get you towards your goal. Or your goal might be something like, well, just simply having a million dollars by releasing only. And in your mind, you have no idea how, how am I going to get there? So you might not know where to start, what action to take. But the action step is a releasing step. So if you're stuck trying to figure it out, well, where do I start? Where's it going to come from? And you see that you're really spinning in your mind about it. You have not a lot of clarity, a lot of confusion and self-doubt. Then that is your action. You know what? If I have a lot of self-doubt, I'm going to focus in on that. I'm going to do some exercises to erase all that self-doubt so I can move forward. Because if I am on a path to get a million dollars by releasing only, wiping out my self-doubt is a huge step to get there. And that's an action I can take. All right? So think about a goal that you have. And what action can you take right now that will get you towards that goal? And just take whatever comes to mind. All right, you got something in mind? Now, see if you have any resistance to taking that action, like procrastination. Oh, ma, I'll do it tomorrow. Or maybe you really feel some resistance. Oh, God. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. And you just feel it like in your chest and your stomach is like this block, this <gasps> type of a feeling. All right, so just see if you have any resistance to it. And however you experience that resistance as a feeling, as just a complaining in your mind, as a habit that you have, like a habit to procrastinate, measure that resistance in whatever form that it is. Measure it on a scale of zero to 10. 10 being the most resistant, and zero being the least resistant. See where you're at. All right, you got that? Now, wherever that resistance is at, whether you're at a three, an eight, a 10, or 15, wherever it is, just look right at that resistance. See, it's just a feeling. You identified it, and you're able to put a number on it. Now, never mind the story, never mind that action step. But that resistance that you put a number on, just look right at that resistance. And notice, notice how typically you don't like that resistance. Like, you don't like it when you procrastinate. You judge yourself. Oh, there I go again. Or you don't like that heavy feeling that you're carrying around with you. So the tendency is to say no to it. Right? And have you been saying no to your resistance? Now, when you say no to that resistance, does that make the resistance go away? 
sorry for the noise. We got some construction going on outside. Hopefully it's not too big of a uh, distraction here. But let's just focus in here. Now, when you say no to that resistance, does it make it go away? No, it doesn't. It just builds it up more and more and more, right? And say no to the resistance doesn't change anything. So since saying no doesn't work, let's try a different approach. Look right at that resistance and now, this time, just say yes to it. Just say yes to the resistance. And say yes to that resistance even more. And say yes to that resistance even more. And say yes to that resistance even more. And even more. And say yes to that resistance even more. And even more. And even more. And say yes to that resistance even more. And even more. And even more. And even more. Now notice how you feel. Measure yourself again on that scale of 0 to 10 or 15 or 20, wherever you may have put yourself at. And notice if you move. Notice if it's dropped. And see if you feel lighter, calmer, more peaceful. Notice the difference? Now, now that you have some energy flowing, you're letting go of some of that resistance, let's capitalize on this momentum. Let go of pushing down on the rest of that resistance. Just allow the rest of it to come up. There's probably some still down there. Wherever that resistance came from, just invite it up. Allow it to arise. And just open up. Open up an imaginary door right in front of you. And imagine that resistance going right on out the door. It might look like smoke. It might look like bubbles bubbling out. Whatever. And just allow that resistance to leave. And more. And even more. And welcome up some more. Let go of holding that resistance down. It's what we're used to doing. We don't like it, so we try to manage it. We try to keep it bottled up so it doesn't bother us. But what we accomplish by doing that is carrying it around with us. It doesn't go anywhere. We keep it and we take it with us wherever we go. And it's coming up to leave now. You feel that? So just let it come up. Get out of the way. And let that resistance leave now. Let it leave even more. And 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 notice how you feel now. Feel nice? Now, take a look at that action that you were looking at and see if it's easier to just go ahead and take that action now. You notice that? It's easier. You know, you can see it in your mind. Okay, I don't have to make this a struggle. I don't have to figure anything out. It's very clear now. I can just do it. And plus, you feel a little bit lighter, like you're not having to fight through your feelings in order to take the action. And also what this shows you, like I mentioned in the last video, is that if you have an aversion to taking action, which is what that resistance was, it keeps you stuck. And if you have an aversion, if you can't take action, that's in a low energy. And therefore, you inevitably must take action. You're not going to be able to do anything from a state of beingness unless you're totally okay with taking the action. But see, even now, if you imagine yourself taking action, no big deal. I'll do it. It's easy. 
You see? And what's wrong with that? And here's the thing. As you take this approach to do and be and do and be and use releasing as you do things, you're freeing yourself in the process as you're doing things. You're not only making things easier for yourself, but you're moving up higher and higher and higher. So as you release, the less you have to do. The more you could see, oh, I could just make a decision to have that end result. And it just happens without you having to take action. See, it's a process of doing this that will get you to that end result where you can be lazy. You just think and have things happen. And this is what we're going to show you in the brand new Conscious Creation Master Course. We're going to do a lot of work on taking these action steps and releasing on them so you can seriously move towards your goal in a very real and tangible way and get those results, achieve your goals, and be happier and freer as you do it. So I'll put a link to it up here. I'll put a link to it in the description. Join me. It starts in January. And it's going to be an amazing new event and approach to releasing and knowing yourself as the doer and the beer. So check it out and keep practicing this. Keep releasing. That's the key. Make releasing constant. Take action. Release as you do it. And you will always grow, evolve, get happier, lighter, and freer. Keep it up. And I'll see you on the next video.